Hey everybody, welcome to the Serve Brew. I'm Tori Townley. I'm so excited about today. We have some people who are very close to my heart who are actually like family, my home church. I talk about them all the time. Purpose Church, Pastor Chad and Angel Dinkle, and our outreach director, Haley Freeman. Hi. What's up? Hi. What's up? <laughs> Man, I am really excited. Like it's I don't know. I know Chad and Angel, y'all have been on the Serve Brew like way back before it was even a podcast officially. So this is really fun to have you guys back. It is my heart. This is um, just such an honor. I love our church. I love being part of outreach and what we do and just honor you guys. Thank y'all for the way that you love people. It's insane. So yeah, I'll introduce y'all real quick. Um, Chad and Angel, I would not be married to Josh Townley if it wasn't for <laughs> you guys. Um, that's kind of like, I've known y'all since I was a kid, but um, my husband going through recovery from addiction and things like that, and just the heart that y'all have to plug him in. He found, found God through new beginnings and um, you know, I'm kind of attracted to the bad boys a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> Josh got me and he loves Jesus. He's like the best person in the whole world. And have, have you guys not given him that chance to grow, we wouldn't be where we are today. So thank you for that. And just, I look up to y'all outreach wise. I've grown up learning how to do different serves. Like we did donuts at the methadone clinic together. We've done so many weird things, but just Chad is, oh my gosh, Chad, you're the one I just found out this year was the one who put the prosthetic legs at my desk and freaked me out. <laughs> I was driving down the street and I saw some prosthetic legs in the trash. You can't just leave that there. Somebody had to pick those legs and you seem like the best place to, you know, that was the best spot for them to land. Wow. I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> No, I think I've shared this story on the podcast before, but I didn't know who did it. So our, our cubicle at Healing Place was the drop off for donations, like outreach. We had clothes, we had weird curtains, uh -huh. we had food. I had needles like for the medical clinic all the time. Oh and one day I walk up, there's a prosthetic leg and I leave to go to the bathroom because I'm freaked out. And then there's two. <laughs> again, and it's back down to one. And I'm like, what is going on? And it took me oh, years to figure out it was Chad. <laughs> I should have known. Course. So good times, good times. <laughs> Funny. And then we've got Haley. I was looking back at pictures of when I met you, and I'm pretty sure your first visit with Purpose was an outreach. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It was an adoptive block. It was Serve Day. Serve Day. Okay. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And you were just, you and Ricky, your boyfriend were just like, I thought you were in charge. Like y'all just <laughs> jumped in, you love people, you took over <laughs> and you've just been all in ever since. And now you lead outreach at purpose and you are such an inspiration to me and to everybody. So you do so much, but I'll let, let you guys introduce yourselves. That's just my spin. I could go on for days, but um, yeah. Tell us about you and our icebreaker is what's your Starbucks order? It's coffee break. Go ahead, Haley. So my favorite Starbucks order, although I don't drink coffee, is chai tea because it's tea and it's not coffee. So I prefer that over coffee. And I guess a little intro of myself is, um, you know, I didn't grow up in Baton Rouge, but Baton Rouge is my home. And for as long as I can see into the future will be my home along with Purpose Church. And so I just love it here. I love serving. I grew up serving without knowing that it was serving God. And so it's always been something that I've just done in my life. And so when um, Chad and Angel came to me, it was like, oh, wow. Okay. Like I can't that's something wild, like a title put on it, but like, you just don't change. You just keep serving and just, and so I, nothing's really changed. Um, just live in life and keep reaching those. And I don't know. That's just, I guess, a little intro about me. Amazing. You rock. That's so cool. Chai tea. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Hey, I love because that. She's insanely ADD and caffeine would just wreck her. <laughs> This is, this is true. <laughs> it would. It does. I feel like so much could be, we could go on and on really about Haley. She could go yeah. on and on about herself and we all, like, <laughs> she is insane. She 
<laughs> rocks outreach at Purpose Church, yeah. like for real. It is amazing. Um, we just had lunch and she's on and on about how th- these are the things that keep her up at night. Like it's, it's truly unbelievable. So we are so, so grateful for Haley. She is the best. Yes. Um, Glad to have the opportunity to do it. <laughs> I love this. It was like a love fest. <laughs> just celebrating each other (laughs) yeah it's so cool she did I love how she loves serving truly and has done it her whole life but she didn't realize like you know that you could almost like turn it up in the name of Jesus like for people for him for his glory so cool yeah um yeah it's hard to shift gears from that but I have Starbucks and my order is usually um a honey almond flat white. And the first time I ever had it was in Key West. And every time I drink it subconsciously, the first sip, I remember Key West. I feel like I'm back there. (laughs) 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 You got to introduce yourself too. It's not just about coffee, even though it's served brew. Yes. Well, um, I'm Angel Dinkle and, um, So Chad and I planted Purpose Church in 2018. Prior to Purpose Church, um, I was a speech therapist for 15 years and served in kids ministry at my local church for, I guess, close to 20 years. And really, um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of my heart is definitely for people, definitely for kids. Like I just, they have a special place in my heart. And then, um, yeah, the ministry journey has been about four years and it is, it's amazing. It's a really fun, wild ride and outreach is the best part. Oh, yeah. Hands down. <laughs> um, well, I'm drinking a nitro <laughs> with sweet cream right now, but that's not that's my not typical sorry. drink. My, my order is usually a grande, whatever's freshest, with a shot of espresso, honey, and just a splash of heavy whipping cream, but they usually dump it in. And, and that's not a good situation <laughs> for me usually. Um, yeah, so I've been, um, yeah, in ministry probably, I mean, I got saved when I was 20 years old and, and I mean, highly involved in church the whole time, but I'd say probably uh, maybe a little over 15 years, maybe a little longer than that. Almost, yeah, probably about 18, 19 years. Just, I mean, God radically tra- changed my life and transform me and and I've just been I mean from the get-go uh reaching out to my old knucklehead friends who were stuck in addiction and just trying to get them into church and um and and it kind of just snowballed from there I was uh the previous church we were at um I was on staff over all the addiction recovery I was pretty much all over all the challenging areas of life I was over addiction recovery divorce care single moms uh widows and troubled youth and, um, and I just love people. I love, I love the hurting. I love people that just uh, maybe that others don't really want to uh, be involved with. That's, that's just the people I want to give my life to and have given, yeah. we've given our life to. Um, and yeah, like she's, we, we have a ministry we launched in 2015 called Restoring Purpose Ministries and then launched Purpose Church in 2018. So that's, that's the story. And we've been married. I mean, the best part of the story is I've been married to Angel for. Eight, almost, almost 18, 18 almost 18 years we have two incredible sons Brody and Abram and uh yeah I'm in love with this girl and I'm <laughs> I'm sad that she didn't think that was a part of introducing herself oh, you know? gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh somebody's about the church life <laughs> oh, Lord. You're crazy I love the story and I love like just having such history with you guys. I can truly say, and a lot of people say this is like nothing changed. Like when you guys became pastors and started a church, it was like, it didn't change. Like you guys are, have always been in the challenging situations, not with the challenging people, but the people in the most challenging situations, like always in the trenches, always just saying yes, doing crazy stuff, doing life with people. And it's never been the glamorous stuff. It's always like, oh yeah, like you're hanging out, having this conversation. Like I watch both of you, like not in the spotlight, but I've seen, I've felt left out of moments like, oh man, everybody's inside partying and I'm stuck like having this conversation with this person. And that's so sad to say, but I look over and like Chad's in the parking lot in the car having a one-on-one counseling moment with another dude. I'm like, that is the heart of y'all. Y'all are about the one. 
and our whole church culture is about that and it's such a gift so um yeah I want to just give you guys a minute to talk about like the shape of purpose church and how it is so outreach oriented and the heart for the city um paint a picture for people who've never visited um what does it look like what is our church culture outreach about (laughs) yeah um you know, we launched downtown Baton Rouge and, and I mean, having pop, pop-up outreaches. I mean, there's so many people around on the lunch break. So, you know, just, you know, trying to reach out to people. You're building a church and, and uh, you know, you're just inviting as many people as you can. Um, yeah, it just, I, I guess the first thing that I thought of when you asked that, um, you know, because 2020 and 2021 really, uh, punched us in the gut as it did many churches and uh, we did we uh, you know through circumstances we, we lost our church our, our, our place to meet and so we ended up uh, getting the upgrade but that upgrade came with a massive construction project and um, I remember I found myself just completely just depleted not happy uh, not enjoying ministry. I've always been one that enjoys ministry, enjoys, but I, I didn't enjoy it anymore. I, it was, it was, it was, uh, I was in a bad place. Uh, we had these weird floods in our city and um, it was houses that literally had never flooded in 50 years flooded. And we just started like doing outreach, bringing Chick-fil-A to people that flooded, bringing buckets of supplies to, to families. And, and it's like something came back alive in me. And, um, you know, that, that's what helped me to realize, well, this is what I love about ministry. I love reaching out. You know, I say all the time, our church is kind of odd shaped. We, we bring the love of Jesus outside of these walls because we have more than four. I don't know how many walls we have. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, uh, having that church environment where, you know, come to us uh, doesn't um, spark my interest. It's mm-hmm. it's bringing the love of Jesus outside of these walls and looking for the most unique, yes. insane ways to do that is what I'm all about and what we're all about. You have anything to add to that? I, love I don't that. know if I even answered the question. Yeah, I think to go to go back more to our beginning a little bit too to give honor to our pastors, um, mm-hmm. Pastor Dino and Delin. Like this is how we were brought up mm-hmm. in ministry. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Oh, yeah. um, it was the way that they taught and did ministry that the way they pointed us to who Jesus was, that he was the servant of all and to do ministry and to be any kind of leader. It's about a towel. It's not about a title. And Mm -hmm. so um, you just don't forget those things. You don't forget what it's really all about. And those are the things that bring freedom. Like Chad is expressing. I mean, it brings freedom, not just once, but again, (laughs) And again, like over and over again, you find yourself in, in Christ the most and free the most when you're about others and when you're about serving and when you're caring for the least of these and for the forgotten and for the lost. And then I think what is helping us to keep that the focus is that we're watching people all around us as they come and be a part of purpose, find their freedom in serving yeah. others. Yeah. And so that's, um, it is beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I, yeah, I've seen so many stories. Like even, I know I mentioned Josh, but like my husband, he found his purpose serving alongside, like getting in on outreaches. And I think at our church at purpose, it's so beautiful that Sundays to me are a reflection of everything that's happened throughout the week. It's like mm-hmm. there are outreaches that take place and moments that are taking place. And when you look around on a Sunday, you're like, oh my gosh, like the motel outreach is represented here. The restoring purpose, sober living is represented here. All of these moments, the deaf community, like it yeah. is such a culmination. And you guys put so much weight. It's not like Sunday is the number one thing. It's the whole thing. It's the community and the people. And that's what makes it so special. And it is crazy that a disaster and COVID like they hurt so much but they sparked so much fresh life and it has been like it was already strong in our compassion but whatever happened in that time it's just like erupted and that's when Haley you like really took charge too especially during the floods I want to hear your heartbeat because I know it's is similar but also you have your, your unique flavors 
So tell me your heart for outreach. So one thing like I've always enjoyed is like the simple things that you, it's not like this big production and it never has to be a big production. It's simply like showing somebody that they're loved or there's something that a stranger can see that, okay, I love you and I don't know you, but I know that your life is beautiful. Um, and I know that God has a plan for you. And a lot of, it's, it's hard for people to see for themselves. And so like through COVID, we had to get real creative with a bunch of things. And um, I just really enjoyed, and I was babysitting kids at the time and they really helped me to see like, oh, why don't we just put treats out? And I was like, that's a great idea. Like I would have never thought, you know, and so um, staying in tune with the kids really helped those simple acts of kindness during COVID where things were just so dark um, and people didn't see the light at the end, you know, um, and so that's really, and then I, I've learned through you and through um, Angel and Chad that it's, you know, outreach can be so many different things. And just like, as long as the main goal, like is always just like sharing the love of Jesus, you're always doing God's work. Oh, so good, Haley. I, I love that. Yeah. There's nothing. It just simple acts of kindness feel so much. And I love that you were able to like see differently. I think we all were all, all were able to see differently in that time. Um, we like the whole serving big is serving small thing that we were saying that whole year I think we really saw that and it just it sparked so much fresh creativity it's been awesome um okay so I love our heart if you guys would give people some specifics I know you've covered a lot but like bullet points really fast what are the outreaches that Purpose Church is all about pick I know we have hundreds of thousands but um, (laughs) give us like a quick snapshot of outreach at Purpose yeah Haley why don't you go for it Um, so I would start with serve day because that's like a number one big one for everybody. So we do serve day. We try to do something at the beginning of the school year with giving back to the kids, um, or in the community with the kids, whether that's through adopt a block or just outreach in some sort of capacity at the beginning of the school year to assist families in any way. And then we do trunk or treat where we open up our facility and allow kids to have a safe place to come trick or treat. Um, so trunk or treat is the concept where you open up your trunks, you decorate and you hand out candy there versus your house. So it can be done anywhere. So that's a lot of fun. And we always do, um, pumpkin painting, which is always crazy, but super fun. And then this past year, we did our first Christmas mall, which was a blast and super excited to say like, it's going to happen every year. Um, and then I'm trying to think, And then we did be the church Sunday this past spring, which I will talk about a little bit more later, but I think we plan to do that definitely every year as well. And then that brings us back to the end of the school year and then going into summer. So kicking off summer outreaches. Um, But throughout all of that, we also go to hotels up the road from our church um, and serve those there. We bring them hot meals every other Monday just about and just try to talk to them about Jesus and hopefully maybe get a a few of them into rehab or detox when possible when the opportunity presents and if not just building relationship with them for whenever they are ready to make that next step. Um, We have done Adopt-A-Block with changing locations. Um, Our Adopt-A-Block has shifted a little bit but we tend to do that throughout the year as well and I don't know if I'm forgetting anything else. I think that's pretty much it. Do uh, roadside water giveaways. Um, yeah. 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 That was, that was a lot of it. Yeah. That was good. That was, good. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a lot of the big ones, but there's tons of just random acts of kindness that was spoken on earlier that are sprinkled in there all throughout the year. Yeah. That's what I was going to comment. Like, Haley is the mixture of you bring structure to the spontaneity so Haley's like there's a schedule and we have things figured out but there's always going to be a thousand things that pop up so you kind of bring some structure to the spontaneous and it just mixes so well so you never really know what's going to happen I love some of my favorites have been like the sober living cookouts that we've done I think that's super cool there's just always something that happens disaster relief you never know I think I remember during COVID Chad called like 
24 hours before this happened. And he was like, I have a thousand jambalaya plates. Can you figure out where to send them tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got on the phone, we found all these hospitals and it was fantastic, but that's what I love. Yeah. It's just, we are a yes culture. And that's what brings me to really the conversation for today. So um, we say yes to crazy things. And you guys had this crazy serve idea um, which really wasn't that crazy to me, but I think to everybody else, it will be, um, this be the church Sunday. What is it? Why did we do it? Tell, where did it come from? Break it down. I think people will really love this. Yeah. So, um, it really, the idea came about 10 years ago. I was hanging out with my pastor who was on a sabbatical and, you know, being on a sabbatical made him able to go to a grocery store on a Sunday morning. And, uh, he said, Chad, you would not believe how many people or at Albertsons, the grocery store, instead of church. And, and he was kind of saying that, to, you know, we need to figure out something to go reach these people. And so uh, we had this idea of, 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 of being the church. And, you know, our typical outreach is, is you know, usually to the poor, the hurting, uh, those that are, you know, just, you know, in a, in a bad situation. And, and so we had this idea, what if we do an outreach it's just reaching people that just are not in church mm -hmm. and go to those areas that they're somewhere other than church. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily destitute or in a bad situation, but you know, maybe they, they're hurting and, and, and lost and no one's reaching out to them. And so uh, the most obvious uh, idea because of my pastor was, um, was grocery stores. Uh, so what we did, um, we had um, an opportunity in the church. So we had child care so families could serve. And we put together what we called or what I call, and I made everybody else call, <laughs> happy packs. And, and the, the heart behind a happy pack is what is something someone could give any of us that would just be like, oh, that's nice. You know, like, make me happy. So uh, it had a, a, the Gospel for Kids, One Hope. We partnered with them. They gave us these little books, the, the Gospel for Kids. Uh, had you know, water in it with a little additive, a little flavor additive, had um, some candy, some free ice cream or free corn dog. What else did it have? Some chips. Chips, some gum, oh, an Easter right egg with Easter. some gum. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so what we did in the church, everybody who had kids or, or didn't want to get out, they, they came and, and they put together, we put together over a thousand of these happy packs. And then we had people at grocery stores and, and what they were doing was helping bag groceries uh, you know, loading the groceries and, and walking them to the cars, helping them load their cars and, and either giving them a, a invite card to Easter or a happy pack. Yeah. Um, and then we cleaned up the parking lots. We went to Costco, mm -hmm. got kicked out of Costco. <laughs> we didn't have permission, but they didn't tell us we couldn't That's come right. either. And I That's am right. a member. So we went That's to right. Costco and we had a, a, an allotted amount of money mm -hmm. that people could buy uh, meals at the cafe deal they have. So we're paying for people's food. Again, just give them a card. Hey, just want to bless you. Uh, happy, you know, happy Easter. Um, and loading cars there. We went to a park uh, here in town and just loving on people. That was my, it was one of the slowest of them, but it had the most outcome for some reason. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah. There was this one girl there. Uh, <laughs> so they go and they say, hey, we're with Purpose Church. And she said, oh, I was actually invited to go to church, <laughs> to Purpose Church. And I said I was going to come, but I came to the park instead. <laughs> She even showed the text message and everything. Uh, but yeah, there was like, you know, several people there that either had been wanting to check out purpose or yeah. what else? What else? Oh, we went to nursing home. Tell them about the nursing home. Yeah, that was really special. Um, so we had an opportunity for our worship team to go to a nursing home and lead worship for um, the people that are living there. And that was just powerful. I mean, there's nothing like that to like really bring a church experience to people um it, it was special to watch and it was not only like the residents living there but some of them had spouses that were there that morning visiting them so um and then also workers that were just leaning in as hard as they could to get what was happening in that room but that was a special one yeah there was one guy there that was uh, very charismatic making everybody <laughs> clap he was actually an lsu quarterback like 50 something mm -hmm. years ago probably mm -hmm. 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another old guy. I said, hey, man, are you enjoying this? And he said, yeah, they usually only bring Catholic stuff in here. And I said, I said, you're not Catholic. He goes, I'm Baptist. <laughs> and I was like, come on, baby, let's worship. <laughs> oh, man. Oh.
Wow. This is, it was such a fun day. Every yeah. direction that you looked, people were just so happy. All of our yeah. church members, I remember watching people walk up, like who maybe forgot that it was Be the Church Sunday, because y'all warned us. You're like, yeah. where's your serve shirts? We're going out. But people came up in their Sunday clothes, and I was like, uh oh, they're going to be going home. <laughs> no, they went and they got their serve shirts and they brought their whole family and jumped right in. And it just made me so proud. Like, this is who we are, and everyone was just glowing. And Haley, you did such a great job at making sure that people who had different skill sets, different abilities, crazy toddlers, everyone had a chance to plug into something. So can you speak to that a little bit? So I'm thinking about our listeners who are like, okay, our church may be a different size, or maybe it's going to be too hard to mobilize this many people on a Sunday. That's insane. Um, Chad, you've already mentioned like the benefit of it in the community, like how amazing, what a statement to the people who are like, you'd leave your church to come find me at a park. That's nuts. Um, but Haley, like practically, what would you say just thinking through how do you mobilize that many diverse sets of people? Yeah. So the main thing was digging really into our, our dream team. And we knew of our, some strong leaders that really, just needed a spot to serve and they've been wanting to have that opportunity to do that. So we really talked to them and was like, hey, would you wanna lead an outreach? Like today's the perfect day. Like we'll have it all set up for you. We'll have everything you need. Like you can do this. And I really think like that speaks for itself, like empower empowering other on our team um, really gives them what they need to serve and like draws their faith deeper as well. But so logistically, um, we kind of pointed out those people, made those phone calls ahead of time, told them, you know, what they were going to be doing, their task. Um, each team member had a paper that had the 10 serve tips along with the task and location. And then um, Angel and Chad kind of got up there and told everybody like where we were meeting. So if you wanted to go here, you met in the back corner. If you wanted to go to this location, you met it by the cafe and so on and so forth. So once everybody broke up before anybody left, we really just made sure everybody had enough people in their team. And I think that was like key because I had to say like, hey, do you mind coming to this location and serving? There's a lot of people wanting to hand out water and we only needed like five and there was 15. So we had to like move some people and everybody was like, yeah, I want to go wherever. I just didn't know where to go. So this is what I chose. And then once we did that, each team leader had the address of where they were headed, their name and phone number on it. So if anything were to happen, um, if they would get lost, they could call up their leader and get back connected and figuring out where to go. Off of the church, so inside of kids, they were in kids' church. Um, they were coloring bookmarks to go inside of the happy packs. So inside of the Bibles that Pastor Chad talked about, um, we were putting bookmarks that were hand colored by the kids. So that was a way to get the kids more involved. Um, and then they also did a little lesson themselves and whatnot. But, and then the, a lot of times those families stayed here and served. Um, and then once they were done, they, a lot of them took some of the packs with them to give out throughout the week to invite people to church um their mailman their teachers I don't know swim teachers whoever they they come in court contact with during the week um so that was a way to get kids involved and a lot of our like I would say 10 years old or eight years old and up or helping with the bag. So they were putting the bubble gum inside the egg, something super simple. And that was able, that was one less spot we had to fill on the line of making the bags. So it was just a really easy way to get everybody involved and everybody had fun. And some people had never served before. So we were like kind of nervous about, are people gonna show up? <laughs> Are they going to want to come serve? But it was a huge, like, show up and everybody was there. and Everybody was having fun. It was, it was awesome to see everybody involved. That's amazing. You know, one thing um, I wanted to just, to just add, um, you know, uh, serving completely changed our life. Mm -hmm. You know, reaching outreach, that whole concept completely changed our lives. And, and I've watched on our motel outreach, we, we do that with our sober living guys. So it's men and women that are in sober living. And I've seen how us reaching out to people that are at that rock bottom, how it's impacting those that are on the outreach. 
And, and the heart behind it, we do plenty of outreaches. There's opportunities all the time. Everyone allots that time for Sunday morning. We're like, what if we make it available during this time slot that they're already showing up? Because I've seen how it's, it's helping these men to fall in love with serving God. Yeah. And so it, imagine if our whole church was just like on a deeper level, so in love with serving God, because serving God is not lame. Outreach is fun. Yeah. It's not boring. It's not lame. You never know what's going to happen. It is an exciting part of living for Jesus. And what if we can get our whole church in love with serving God? Yeah, hopefully they love God, but really in love with it. Because our vision is that they would love God and love people. Yeah. And loving people is reaching out and it's serving. It's, yeah. it's all that. So. Wow. I got goosebumps on that one. It's so true. And just like the sacrifices that you guys would make in order for people to just taste taste it. It's not like I'm trying to hustle you and make you do an outreach. It's like, no, you need this for your life. Yeah. You need yeah. this for the fire of your soul. And it's, mm-hmm. it's so, so true. And I love what you mentioned too, Haley, of how you guys really looked at the people in the church and thought through what are their gifts and their talents and their interests and how can we plan things that they will really connect to and feel, okay, I can make a difference. Like you just made it so realistic, even like um, our deaf community. Like we have a a big group of people who are deaf and they, you found something perfect for them to jump in and help out with. And they, I looked over and they're just like smiling their hearts out, like so happy, so encouraged. And so I think that was incredible to see, um, just how you guys thought through all that so thoughtfully. Um, I did want to ask if you guys could think through, this could be a risky move, especially for a church who may be a little bit of a larger size, like to say, hey, we're shutting down service on a Sunday. What are some of the risks that you guys had to think through? And what would you say to a church as they're processing that? And how does it outweigh the win outweigh the risk? Or maybe, maybe it's like just faith and you'll figure it out. (laughs) Well, I mean, one thing for, I, I didn't think about this risk until the next Sunday. What if uh, people go to other churches and they like them better and they don't come back. <laughs> you know, what if, what if we, and next Sunday I was like, did we kill purpose church? <laughs> Cause for whatever reason, the next Sunday was, it was pretty low. I was like, I, I think we killed our church. It's <laughs> funny. Uh, yeah. Funny. <laughs> you know, I think that there's just certain, that's one of the things that I'm trying to learn right now is there is a um you know there are some advantages and disadvantages to to being a smaller church yeah. uh you know and so i feel that our ability to do this is an advantage of having a smaller church because if you have a church of 3000 10000 you know it would be really hard to plug people in but it's doable yeah. you know and yeah. and it's i know a friend of mine they they did a, a similar thing they um they served uh, while they were all watching the online service, I think they had a big gym. And so they did some sort of outreach it was Anthony Minor at, at Hope City. Yeah. They, they had a, a big warehouse area. So they're serving, putting things together while they're watching online. So it may have to be a hybrid to do something like this, but I think it's worth the risk. You know, if we're, we're called to go after the one um, and if, and we are all called to be the church, no matter what size our church is. Yeah. It may be a challenge, but I think between Haley and uh, Haley alone could get 3000 people serving. You know what I mean, yeah, she no could doubt. do it on her own. And so it's doable. It takes effort. It's expensive. But man, those people that are out there that are unchurched, they feel yeah. lost. They feel like they don't belong. They're worth going after. Yeah, I think, I think like, I'm sorry. No. I think like larger churches, like y'all know those packathons where you're making the bag that yeah. takes tons and tons of people. We're like, we're not at that place to do that, but that's an amazing opportunity to get your whole church together, pack all these bags. And even if they have a ministry, like um anthony does in uganda like that's automatically giving back to their own ministry right there and their whole church had something to do with it like that's just something that could be really cool i, love that. I think something that like outweighs any risks that we would think about is when you're when you want people to catch the heart of who you are as a church, but it's more than that. It's really who we're striving to be. We're striving to be like Jesus and we're striving to be all about others. Then it's just the desire for your church to see it, catch the heart and be a part of it, experience it. And that to me is worth the risk. Um, 
but another idea on a practical level of like large church, or I don't know if we could do this any size church would be, as Chad was kind of saying, another idea would be um, to wait for a time when maybe local churches are shutting down because there's a storm coming or something like that. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. But like, you know, what? we can't have church today, but we can go out and serve our community. And I yeah. think that's such a cool idea. I know churches have done that before. Yeah. Yeah, kind of brilliant angel. Very, very doable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really smart. And yeah, I think it's so cool. Um, I hear a lot. I think most people, when they're looking for a church, they do look for the people who care about the community. They want to know you're the real deal, and they look for a sense of community. And so, to me, yeah. that is appealing as a churchgoer as well as a person in the community. So, who knows? I know this was just like a month ago that we did this, or less but who knows the fruit that's going to come from it. So this is exciting. I think it's just such a brilliant opportunity. You guys went all out. So I love it. Are any other practical tips or advice that you would give to someone who's like, let's try this. Let's just go out and do it. I will say the timing of it, which I, as we were like throwing the idea out and like, we have to fit this in on our calendar year. We weren't even thinking about, it being right just weeks before Easter, but that was honestly, that was the Lord because that yeah. was brilliant to be able to then, I mean, people are looking for an invitation this time of year to like, where is there somewhere I can go to church? Like I want to go for Easter, but I don't know where to go. And we were able to so naturally get out as a church and invite people. So that was cool. You just made a rookie mistake. <laughs> Whenever it's not strategy and it just happened, you look back and say, well, strategically, <laughs> We knew Easter was falling right after. I gave so what a great credit. opportunity. Yeah, no. I thought it was. I thought the whole time it was on purpose. I just learned that. So <laughs> it will be next year on purpose. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's funny. I love it. Okay, so that was a beautiful snapshot. I think people can look on our social media, just kind of see some of the pictures and fun moments and just get a feel for it. Um, but I did want to just kind of open it up to you guys. Like it can be, be the church related, or it can just be, you want to share open mic moment, talk to our Servolution community from your heart, just encourage them, challenge them, reprimand them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Haley, you have anything you want to share? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. No pressure. Mm -hmm. Just off the top of my head, I guess it would just be to like never lose that heart for serving. I feel like we're all at risk for that. I mean, as we fall in and out of life or in and out of different roles or depending on just seasonally where you are in life with babies, whether it's yours or your grandchildren, I think that the tendency is when life um, gets escalates in that way that you would fall out of it. But um, I think to just keep that on the forefront as something that is just, no, this is who I am. And I'm going to serve, even if it's like with a toddler's hand in mind, like I'm going to do this because it's so the heart of Jesus yeah. is so important. That's good. That's good. Oh, so good angel. So See, like good. one thing, like I've been looking at, it's like so hard you know, as a small church to like take ideas and like downscale them. But I have to remind myself that it doesn't have to be this big thing. Like simply, um, like we've recently talked, like simply going hang out at the park and getting to know the kids playing there. Like that that's our adopt a block area. Like just really getting to know them. Like it doesn't have to be fancy ever really. Like nobody expects that. Um, just loving on them and forming those relationships and introducing them to God and growing with them and anybody with God it's that's what the whole point of what we're doing is and why we should not make it a production that's, that's good. so good that reminds me of like LA Dream Center they're like the most massive outreach you could ever be part of and their key is you go out and you ask how can I serve you today like that's it they don't even always bring stuff to give away it's just I'm here to love you what do you need and yeah. that's how it's grown so that's brilliant I love it and angel what you said holy cow that's my season like me and Cosmo I stay desperate to make a difference I'm like I will go to Walmart with sticky notes and let people know that Jesus loves them and that's, that's <laughs> how I make a difference but it'll work so that's so good don't lose the fire I love. I love that, Tori. And then that births the heart of like serve in Cosmo's heart, like in our kids' yeah. hearts. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. So good. 
That's good. You know, one outreach we left off that I'm super pumped about is we started bringing snacks, uh, desserts and stuff to the leprosy clinic there you go. that yeah. is on yeah. the street that our church is on. like yeah. a quarter of a mile down the street. <laughs> there's a leprosy treatment place. If it doesn't it, it get any more Jesus like than that. Yeah. We're re <laughs> reaching out to lepers at the leprosy clinic, which is blows my mind. Um, so uh, the, the thing I thought about um, uh, Trey Bergeron, who, who's on staff with us, who's one of the biggest gifts to my life. Um, he, he's just such a blessing. He shared this, um, this statistic with me. It's both discouraging and encouraging. So the, the discouraged, the, the encouraging part is 82% of the unchurched are at least uh, somewhat likely to attend church if invited. So that's like super encouraging. The discouraging part is this, only 2% of church members invite an unchurched person to church. So that means, you know, 98% uh, of churchgoers never even extend an invitation in a given year. So it's encouraging that, man, if that 2% grows, if we just decide, you know, or yeah. I'm going to be a part of that 2%, yeah. that, that, I mean, we could really reach some people for Jesus, just a simple invite. Um, and, and it's true. I mean, very rarely do you get a, a, a rude look or something when you invite them. It's like, oh, you want me somewhere. <laughs> People, I love to be invited. I don't care what it is. If you're like, Chad, do you want to go to the buffet and eat red beans and rice? Well, I, I don't like either things, but I really appreciate the invitation. You know what I mean? Like, so we got to get out there and invite people into the house of God. I fully believe the local church is the hope of the world. And what are we doing if we're not inviting people into it? No matter who they are, what they've done, what they look like, what they smell like, we have to invite people into the house of God. And you can't overlook those that are, uh, seemingly have it all together. Mm -hmm. Right. And it felt like that's what we corrected on Be the Church yeah, Sunday that's good. because we so overlooked those that appear yeah. to have it all together. But man, that's one of the biggest things I learned with launching a church. I, I was all, all, I was so used to just dealing with the hurting and the loss, and it was apparent because they're addicted, they're in bad shape. It was shocking to me how much people hurt that yeah. look normal, that look yeah. just like they have it all together. The, the middle class, the, the, the wealthy, they get overlooked by the church. And, and so I'm super glad that this idea of the Be the Church came about because, you know, we corrected that and we, we made a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's really, really deep, dude. I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Always have one moment where I have nothing to say. I just need to sit for a second. Um, I was just thinking about what's so special. Like, I don't know if I've ever been, I have like this season I am so just passionate about the church and it's something that's special within purpose church that it's like I want people to know like there is a community here like it is not just come attend a service it's like come be part of our family and there's a culture of welcoming people when we see someone new I used to never be like that I'm like I'll go to an outreach but on a Sunday I just don't I'm not I'm too awkward to make the small talk but there is a culture when we see a new face walk in, we are like oh, you're here like you're home who are you where do you come from what's your story and it's because we're so we're so passionate about this is the family this is the body of Christ and we we celebrate people and so I just honor you guys for showing us how to treasure and honor people and and that's I don't know it's just such a beautiful special place to be part of anyone who's listening come visit we will celebrate <laughs> come hang out with us <laughs> it'll be awesome um okay do you guys have anything that you would recommend to our listeners I love to ask this question we tap into your hearts but who are you guys like getting fueled from are you reading a book listening to cool sermons fresh music what can we get some yeah, I mean, I mean, like she said, we were raised like this. I'm, I'm so privileged. My, two of my biggest influencers, mentors, is Pastor Matthew Barnett and and Dino Rizzo, and 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 so like I had the privilege of being mentored by these men that that, that have taught so much and and just ingrained that into us. Uh, I would start with that, you know, with um, a Servolution, uh, the book Servolution. What is Pastor Matthew's book? Um, come on, Tori. Come on, welcome church that never sleeps church that never sleeps okay that's a, a great book and and uh follow you know uh servolution of course on instagram hope oh. city on instagram yeah. uh, you know Haley uh freeman on or 
hails Thank yeah you. on <laughs> Instagram. Uh, that is her Instagram name. Um, Purpose Church. Yeah, I just started looking and, and, and look, plenty of the ideas that we do, we steal from other churches. And that, that's like the most honoring thing. Steal ideas from people and just do them. And say that's literally my whole job. Steal yeah. ideas and put it in a newsletter. That's <laughs> awesome. No, that's so good. I think that, um, yeah, I definitely agree. I think we were influenced by a lot of the same leaders and churches, but um, the LA Dream Center definitely changed our lives. And um, yeah, that is, that's something that um, once you go, it's like, it will never leave you. Like it's, yeah. it's like this restless state of wanting to serve more, wanting to do more for your community. And um, so that's yeah, and, and, and that's what you need to do. So you need to put together a, a, even a small serve team go. and go on a short-term mission trip to the Dream Center. And, and you have to experience it. That, yes. That's like a great starting place because then you come home inspired, like, I'm just going to do that in my city. And, and there's so many practical, easy things. It's not expensive. Yeah. I mean, you can get, let's see, two for $5. You can get, you know, for 200 bucks, you can buy almost a thousand waters. That was terrible math. <laughs> No, I think that was actually pretty close. Um, it wasn't. But I mean, yeah, roadside water giving. Why are you giving me water? Hey, I just want to put a smile on your face. I just want to remind yeah. you that Jesus loves you. You know, yeah. give him an invite yeah. card. It's yeah. not wow. hard. Wow. That might be the first piece of advice that was an action step. I always say recommend something. And that was the first challenge that I did. <laughs> so that was so good. Go on a mission trip and go do an outreach. As a <laughs> I would not expect anything different from y'all. Haley, got anything? I've recently been introduced to Christian rap. Yes. <laughs> Is that it? Cool. <laughs> it's been an experience. Okay. So we'll mix that with our outreach and yep. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, on that note, how can everybody follow you guys, social media, et cetera? I'll put it in the show notes. It's cool. Okay. What's your, <laughs> Bailey? What's your Instagram? <laughs> well, it's just boring. It's just hails, yeah, with two S's and two H's and underscores all in the middle. Perfect. Yeah, we'll put that in show notes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. And Angel. Angel. Yes. I think underscore Dinkle. Angel and, Dinkle. And I'm Chad Dinkle. No spaces, no under. <laughs> only one. Boring. <laughs> cool. Anything else you guys want to sign off with? Uh, thank you so much no, thank for, you. Yes, thank thanks you. for having us. And uh, thanks for being a part of the church. We love yes. you. Love your family. Love Cosmo, yes. Blue, Townley. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're just, we love all the kings. We love Thomas. Yes. And no, I love y'all. This has been my favorite. I love this. I would probably do a two hour podcast if I could, but <laughs> listeners pay me. So thank y'all so much. Thank you, Servolution, for jumping on. We'll check, catch you next time on the Surf Group. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>